Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here for yet another exciting day for Tesla stock. So of course we'll talk about that. And we also have a new interview from Elon Musk about a 20 minute interview for the European Battery Conference in which he has shared some new details on Tesla's battery costs, the Tesla Semi, Gigafactory Berlin, and a couple other things as well. So we'll go through the details on that and the most important takeaways. First up though, Tesla stock. So finally setting a new all time high, not just an all time high close today that we had that too. Tesla peaked during the day at $559.99, surpassing that pre-market trade of $538 on September 1st. So Tesla for the day finished up 6.4%. That compared to the NASDAQ up 1.3%, with Tesla again closing at that all-time high close of $555.38. Of course, today's move now means that Tesla is valued at over half a trillion dollars. Quick look at the volume here, pretty similar to yesterday, 51.6 million shares traded today. So that's 79% of the 12 month average of about 65 million shares. Tomorrow will be kind of interesting as we head into the market being closed on Thursday and early close of course on Friday for the Thanksgiving holiday. All right, moving on to the European Battery Conference interview with Elon Musk then. This was overnight about 2 a.m. Pacific time, about a 20 minute interview and Elon did share quite a few things. One of the things that caught the most attention at least on Twitter today was Elon Musk's comments on long-term battery cost goals for Tesla. So of course we heard at Battery Day they aim to reduce those costs by about 56% per kilowatt hour. So Elon here finally gave us a dollar target. We had not heard that before. He says, quote, the long-term goal would be to try to get to a cost per kilowatt hour of perhaps around 50 cents or 55 cents at the cell level for a long-range battery cell, end quote. So you may have noticed the reason, part of the reason this got so much attention today on Twitter was because Elon said 50 cents or 55 cents per kilowatt hour at the cell level. Considering most estimates today put Tesla above $100 per kilowatt hour, going down to 50 cents per kilowatt hour obviously would be pretty insane. So Elon was pretty clearly misspeaking there, but just to run through a little bit of math here in case anyone has just a a wild theory that maybe someday that would be possible and Elon's talking really long term. No, that's not the case. So to demonstrate that, we can look at the nickel content in the battery pack for the Model 3. That contains around 30 kilograms of nickel. A kilogram of nickel today costs about $15 per kilogram, a little bit more, but let's just round down, let's say scale discounts, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's $450 of nickel in a battery pack for the Model 3. Assuming that's 75 kilowatt hours, that works out to $6 per kilowatt hour just for the nickel content in Tesla's batteries. So yeah, that's just raw materials. There's no way they're ever getting down to 50 cents or 55 cents per kilowatt hour. He also says at the cell level. So even if you misinterpreted that and said that's, you know, a per cell price of 50 cents or 55 cents, which it would never make sense to quantify it that way. But let's say the new 4680s, there's going to be, you know, 800, 900 of those per Model 3 pack. If each cell were 50 cents, you're then looking at a total battery cost of, you know, $450. But again, just the nickel content alone costs around that much. So pretty clearly Elon just misspeaking here, and he means $50 or $55 per kilowatt hour. So that shouldn't be too surprising with the math that we had worked through from battery day, that 56% cost reduction. Most estimates today put Tesla at the pack level, you know, somewhere around $105 to $115 per kilowatt hour. So we can use these long-term targets and combine those with the battery percent reductions that we heard on battery day to get a gauge for those current cost estimates. But it's important to remember that Elon here is talking about the cell cost. And during battery day, that 56% per kilowatt hour reduction, 7% of that was actually for cell to vehicle integration. So I don't think we should be applying that percentage on this base cost here. So let's say then just at the cell cost level, they're targeting you know a 49% reduction there. If that's an accurate assumption, that means Elon's numbers here would imply that today's prices are somewhere between $98 and $108 per kilowatt hour at the cell level. So I don't know how much the additional cost to go from cell to pack would be per kilowatt hour, but these do seem to line up pretty well with what estimates have been and can give us a lot more confidence in where Tesla is currently. And then of course, where they intend to get to longer term with Elon confirming that in this interview. So that means longer term, you could be looking at a 75 kilowatt hour pack costing just $3,750 versus today, maybe somewhere around $7,700. So that's obviously very exciting for the implications for the car, but one thing that I do also think is really interesting is the marginal impact of that as you add battery capacity, because at that price, it just doesn't cost that much to add additional range. Adding 25 kilowatt hours there would only cost an additional, you know, roughly $1,200. So in the case of a Model 3, for example, you could add an additional, let's say 100 miles of range for only a final cost to the customer, 
if you apply a 20% margin on that, of about $1,500. Obviously, the batteries have to fit in the car, so there's going to be a limit, but I think as battery costs come down, that limit is going to be more a physical constraint versus a pricing constraint. I think over time, and this is a little bit, I don't know, sort of off the top of my head, you may see that lead to a situation where Tesla doesn't really need to offer multiple battery pack sizes because, you know, that $1,500 savings, that's really not going to be worth it for probably any set of the market. I mean, if you're spending $25,000 on a car, you can spend $26,500 on a car too. To some extent, we've already even seen this play out with the Model S and the Model X. Now the Model Y, we've heard that we're not going to get a standard range pack for the Model Y. So it'll probably be a while, but maybe we see eventually that disappear for the Model 3 as well. Maybe you're on the time of an introduction of a cheaper vehicle. All right, I hope you can forgive that digression. Let's get back to the Elon interview. He talked a lot about the Semi, a few interesting things here. Just to preface this, we've known since the Semi unveiling that the range target is 300 miles for the lower end version, 500 miles for the higher end version, and of course Tesla always tries to exceed that, but that's 600 kilometers and 800 kilometers pretty closely, respectively for those two versions. So Elon was asked about heavy trucking and if batteries can ever be viable in that space, obviously Tesla thinks that they can. Elon said getting a range of up to 500 kilometers is quite easy. He said trivial to be frank, even pulling a load of something on the order, in his words, of 40 metric tons. 40 metric tons is about 88,000 pounds, while the gross vehicle weight limit in the United States on a class eight truck is 80,000 pounds in total. So that includes the actual weight of the semi as well. So they would never pull a load of that size, but Elon is just approximating here basically saying a full capacity semi can still get that targeted range that Tesla has listed on their website since the semi unveil. So we said a range of up to 800 kilometers, which is roughly 500 miles, that can be accomplished easily. And he said they even see a path to get to 1000 kilometers, reiterating again, that's still pulling a load of, you know, roughly 40 metric tons. So that's about 620 miles, 1000 kilometers, but that's eventually not necessarily today. Interestingly, Elon did say that to get to the 800 kilometer range semi truck, they would need about 300 watt hours per kilogram, something like that, at the cell level. Currently, the highest energy density cells from Tesla are somewhere around 250 watt hours per kilogram. So he's talking about a 20% increase in energy density there, but obviously feels very confident in that happening. And that would obviously be as a result of a lot of the things that Tesla mentioned during battery day, leading to what they believe eventually can be a 54% range increase. Elon did also confirm that one of the unlocks for the semi is using battery cell as a structural component, so cell to vehicle. So not too surprising, but even initially, the semi is going to be using pretty much everything that was discussed at battery day. Oh, and then the last note on the semi here is that Elon did address the range, obviously, with a full load, but then he also addressed the capacity. There have been some concerns about the weight of the semi being such that it lowers the total capacity available for actual cargo. And Elon did say there is a very small penalty here. He said maybe one metric ton, so about 2,200 pounds, though he did say that maybe even less at this point and in the future could potentially go to zero. So I think we can file that one away, maybe go back and do a little bit more research on how impactful a little bit less cargo room would be for logistic operations. The next topic of discussion, being that this was the European Battery Conference, was obviously Giga Berlin. Elon did confirm their intentions are to have battery production of over 100 gigawatt hours annually at Giga Berlin, and he said possibly over time, extending that to 200 or 250 gigawatt hours per year. We've talked a lot about all of the little clues being left that Tesla eventually hopes to produce 2 million vehicles annually from Giga Berlin. This lines up with that. At 100 gigawatt hours, assuming your average vehicle pack size falls somewhere between 100 kilowatt hours and 75 kilowatt hours, you're looking at annual output, if it all goes to vehicles, of 1 million to 1.3 million vehicles. And then for Elon's higher target, 200 to 250 gigawatt hours per year, same math, that would be 2 million to 3.3 million vehicles per year. But again, some of that will probably go to stationary storage. We may have also gotten a little bit of a tidbit here on the rate of production for batteries at the pilot line in Fremont. Elon was talking about just the difficulty of scaling up production, talking about that process from really just validation proof of concept through the pilot line to mass production, saying that they're at the pilot line stage right now, and that Berlin should be, you know, maybe a hundred times where they're at with that pilot line. Obviously over time, they hope to get that pilot line to 10 gigawatt hours, but it sounds like from that comment right now, maybe they're somewhere around an annualized production rate of one to two gigawatt hours, somewhere in that ballpark. Obviously Elon just sort of talking in rough numbers here. 
Even if they're at one gigawatt hour annually, that's still enough per month for more than a thousand vehicles, most likely, depending on a pack size. So not too bad. I think they've still got, you know, six to eight months probably before really mass production is targeted to be started in Berlin. Speaking of which, by the way, LROnline.de is reporting that Tesla is starting a series of significant hiring at Giga Berlin, up to 7,000 jobs. They reported that already the first 200 people have been hired as warehouse employees, and that over the next few weeks, that hiring will get pretty serious. They said there will be application days in December. I'm assuming that translates roughly to something more like a job fair. So really exciting to see that start to get ramped up. All right, last couple of interesting things here from the Elon Musk interview. He was asked about the biggest hurdles to getting to mass production. A lot of stuff that we've heard there, but basically said that Tesla really needs to develop their own advanced machinery for pretty much every step in the entire process, things that don't already exist. So he said that's really what they're doing with the pilot line. And then once they achieve that, Berlin will have it done at scale. And that's another hurdle. And as we have talked about a little bit recently, that's what I believe to be the biggest risk for 2021. But he said really all they're doing here is pursuing lower costs on batteries, but that luckily that's a nice combined effort because that cost pursuit often leads to improved energy density. He said currently their longest range vehicles have ranges over 600 kilometers. That's about 375 miles. Then he said some new updates should push that closer to 700 kilometers, which is 435 miles. Of course, the Model S at 402 is already close to that. We recently heard from a newly delivered Model S owner that their Monroney sticker actually listed the range at 409. So Elon might be referring to that or perhaps something else in the pipeline. And then of course he said longer term, they have things under development that would be around a thousand kilometers, 620 miles. Of course, that would be the Roadster. And then who knows what ends up happening with the Plaid Model S or the Tri-Motor Cybertruck, etc. So those were the big takeaways for me. That'll wrap it up for this episode though. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and sign up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, November 25th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.